Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you succeed in your GCSE and IGCSE. This lesson, Elements, Compounds and Mixtures. <music> elements, Compounds and Mixtures is a really fundamental concept in chemistry. But the first time you learn about it, it's easy to get caught up with unfamiliar chemical names, not to mention having to relearn the definitions of words like element and mixture, which you've almost certainly heard and used before, but not in the way a chemist would. That's okay though, I promise you it's actually really easy. Let's start out with elements. The ancient Greeks had the idea that the millions of different substances all around us in the world were made up of just a few fundamental substances. And it turns out they were absolutely right. Where they went wrong is in what they thought these elements are. They believed there were just four fundamental elements. Earth, air, fire and water. A concept which has stuck with us throughout history, even to this day in things like the different nations in Avatar The Last Airbender or different Pokemon types. Chemists now know that although the Greeks were on the right track, there's actually over 100 different elements that we've been able to identify. Some of them are way more common than others. Some don't even occur naturally and have to be made artificially, and we occasionally even manage to discover new ones. But there's a few really common ones like hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, iron, and so on, which you're going to see all the time. We list all the elements we know about in the periodic table. We could just make a simple list of them, but some of the elements have similar properties, so we organise them according to those properties, giving us this unusually shaped table. These properties are the result of the electron structure of different elements, and if you click the link on screen, you can watch a video all about this. The link will also be in the description. To really understand what an element is, you need to know about another ancient Greek concept, the atom. The Greeks believed if you took a piece of matter, for example a large block of cheese, you could cut it in half, then cut it in half again, and again, and so on. But eventually, no matter how sharp your knife is, you'll eventually reach a point where it's impossible to cut it in half again. This uncuttable particle would be a basic building block of matter. The Greek word for uncuttable is atomos, which is where we get our modern word atom. It's also worth noting that the Greeks weren't the only culture to suggest this concept, with ancient cultures in India, for example, also reaching the same idea. In our modern understanding, an atom is a basic building block of matter, a little like a Lego brick. Each type of brick here represents a single type of atom. Like our bricks, different atoms can make different numbers of connections, have different masses, and can even give us different coloured substances. If a substance is an element, then it is made of all the same type of atom, which we can represent with our bricks like this. They might be solids, liquids or gases, but so long as there's only a single type of atom, then it's an element. The names of all the elements are of course listed in the periodic table, which you will usually receive a copy of in a chemistry exam if you need to check. Again, common ones are hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, silicon, iron, aluminium, sodium and chlorine, though of course there's about a hundred more. If you see the formula for a substance and it only has a single symbol from the periodic table, for example C, Cl2 or O3, then it's an element. If they draw a diagram in an exam paper, they'll typically represent atoms as circles. So if you see circles of the same radius and colour, you should assume they're all the same type of atom, and therefore you're looking at an element. We get a compound when two or more different types of atom are joined together, or bonded to one another chemically, which we can represent with the Lego bricks like this. The atoms may form small molecules like this, or much larger molecules, all you're looking for is two or more different types of atoms stuck to each other. In a diagram, this might look something like this for the small molecules, or like this for the large molecules. Some of the most common compounds have names which make it hard to tell what they're made of, for example water. But the formula always gives them away. Water's formula is H2O, so it has both an H for hydrogen and an O for oxygen, so there is clearly more than one type of atom present. To learn more about interpreting chemical formulae, please click the link at the top right of screen now. If a substance has a double-barreled name like carbon monoxide, sodium chloride, copper sulfate or silicon dioxide, then there's a high probability that it's a compound, especially at GCSE. 
A really important point about compounds is that they are made from elements reacting together chemically, and the only way to separate elements in a compound is by doing another chemical reaction. There's an important word which comes up in chemistry relating to elements and compounds, and that word is pure. If we have a pure element, then it means that there are only the type of atoms of that element present. By definition, therefore, all elements are pure. You can also have a pure compound, for example, pure water. In this case, the word pure means that there is only one type of molecule present. Pure water would mean that there are only water molecules present, with no impurities such as dissolved salts. If something is impure, then we say it is a mixture. By definition, all mixtures are impure. A mixture is when two or more substances are allowed to intermingle with each other, but they do not form chemical bonds to each other. As a general rule, chemical bonds are hard to break and require chemical reactions. But mixtures are just joined physically and can often be fairly easily separated. For example, boiling salt water to separate the salt from the water with evaporation, filtering a solid from a liquid such as filtering calcium carbonate from lime water, or distilling a liquid as we do with crude oil to separate out things like petrol from the substances like tar. With our Lego bricks, we can represent various different mixtures. Here is a mixture of two elements. The small molecules themselves are only made of a single type of brick, but there are a few different molecules present. The air you're breathing right now is a good example of this type of mixture, being about 20% oxygen molecules and about 80% nitrogen molecules. If we drew a particle diagram of this mixture, it would look something like this. Notice that although there are atoms of two different elements present here, we don't have those atoms of different elements bonded to one another. So this is a mixture of two elements. We could also have a mixture of compounds, which might look something like this. Again, notice that these are compounds because they are made of two or more different types of atom. As with the previous example, the compounds are not bonded to one another. So we know this is a mixture. We might draw this mixture something like this. If we took sugar, which is a compound, and dissolved it in water, which is also a compound, we'd get a mixture of the two compounds. The water could be evaporated off to easily separate the compounds again. We could even have mixtures of both elements and compounds like this. It really doesn't matter what combination of substances we have, so long as you see two or more different substances which are not bonded to one another, then it's a mixture. Aside from air and sugar water, there are a lot of other mixtures. All solutions, such as salt water, are mixtures. Crude oil, before we process it, is a mixture. Alloys, where we take two or more metals and combine them, such as bronze, steel, and brass, are all mixtures as well. So in summary, if there's only one type of atom present, then it's an element. If there's two or more types of atom and they're bonded to each other, it's a compound. And if there's two or more substances and they're not bonded to each other, then it's a mixture. And because they're not bonded, mixtures are generally fairly easy to separate into their component substances. I hope that video really helped you. If it did, it'd be great if you let me know in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to get a notification the next time I upload a video. If you check the description, I've got links to my revision guides, to SnapQuiz, that's my revision website and app, and to SucceedSchool.com. That's my website with full lesson plans, schemes of work, and end of unit tests for both teachers and students. I've also got links in the description to my Twitter, my Instagram, my Patreon if you want to support the channel, and there's links to my other YouTube channels, Not School and Not School Plays. You can also click just here to subscribe to this channel, and you can click here to check out this related video. Good luck in your GCSEs and IGCSEs, and thanks very much for watching.